Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. All praise are due to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Lord of the universe. May peace and blessing be upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad peace be upon him. His last and final messenger. May peace and blessing be upon his companions, his wives, his family, and whomever follow on their footsteps. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you with the Islamic peaceful greeting. And I congratulate you and becoming a Muslim and deciding to join and embrace the last and final religion sent to mankind by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may peace and blessing be upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for making this beautiful decision. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill your life with happiness, prosperity, and success. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you paradise in the hereafter. Ameen. This is basically going to be, inshallah, a short series to new Muslims. And uh, I'm going to try to be brief in it. And I, I'm going to uh, also link you to some you know, useful sites and uh, good articles that inshallah you can trust to learn more about Islam. And, you know, so you can gain the knowledge throughout your journey into becoming a stronger Muslim and more faithful, you know, servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing a Muslim should do after testifying the testimony of faith in Islam, which was, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I testify and bear witness that there is no God or deity that deserves to be worshipped, that, that is worth worshipping except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness and testify and believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his last and final messenger. Of course, as a Muslim, you have to understand the meaning of this testimony of faith and apply it into your life. When you're testifying that you know and you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only Lord who deserves to be worshipped, it means you will have to stop all acts of worship that you used to do in past religion or past faith that you used to embrace and concentrate and focus 100% on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partners and no middleman or middle person in the you know between you and Allah in the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there is no need to go to a priest there is no need to go to a statue there is no need to go anywhere but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're praying you must pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone when you are doing any act of worship you know you have to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without worrying about anything and anybody else so that's a must. So when you're testifying the testimony of faith, you don't have to only say it by your tongue, but you also have to start acting upon it and doing it in your daily life and, you know, uh, act upon it in all life aspect and all form of ibadah. The word ibadah in Arabic, it means all, basically it's an Arabic word that, you know, conclude all acts of worship, whether it's physical prayer, spiritual prayer, prayer with your tongue, whether it's a charity that you basically give to the poor, whether it's the act of Hajj, pilgrim to Mecca, which is, you know, you will do, inshallah, later on. <clears throat> so any act of worship that you're going to do as a Muslim, it must be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partners whatsoever. The other thing, the other part of the testimony of faith is that you have to do Everything in Islam according to the Sunnah, to the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. How do we learn that? We learn all Islamic aspects from two main sources. Quran, which is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the noble Quran, the noble book. That's the main source for all Islamic knowledge. Second, the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that was compiled in books authenticated by scholars who actually physically went and traveled throughout countries and regions and cities to write down all the sayings 
that was said by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu On top of his sayings, also we follow his actions, commands, anything that he've done. Things that he've done in his daily life, we try to mimic it. We try to copy it. We try to basically do as he did or do, you know, the things that he did in life. Whether it's prayers that he taught us to say, whether it's uh, the way he used to pray physically, we try to copy his style and his form. Whether it's the way he used to be generous, we try to copy that. Whether his moral and manners, we try to mimic it and copy it. So the sources for Islam is Quran, number one, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to learn it, learn what it means, memorize some of it so you can actually use it in your prayer and do what it tells you to do. And also the second, and basically they go together because there is a lot in Quran that was told to us briefly. When you go to the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you'll see the explanation in depth and all the details that is needed for you to perform the act of worship. So you go to the authentic sources of these saying by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu some of it, the most common one and the most trust, you know, trustworthy one is Sahih al-Bukhari, the book of Bukhari. Basically, the Imam Bukhari, which is an, you know, uh, an amazing uh, Muslim scholar who actually traveled, you know, throughout the Arabian world, looking for companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and, you know, people who uh, listened from them and heard from them and wrote down all those, you know, sayings and actions from trustworthy sources so that nobody came and lied to him about these th things and he was very strict. So we know that the most trusted source in Islamic information after the Quran is Sahih al-Bukhari. Then we have Sahih Muslim. So those two books after the Quran and then later on, you know, we'll talk about the other books later on. But those are the, you know, two hadith books two of the saying of the Prophet ﷺ books that we trust as Muslim. So you basically, when you become a Muslim, you testify, you act upon it in your daily life, you follow the Quran, and you follow the Sunni, the way of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. When you follow the Quran and the Sunni, you must act it and live it the way the companions of the Prophet Muhammad took it and put it into action. Why? Let me give you an example. If somebody give you uh, a recipe to, you know, making a meal or doing something and basically modified it and you do it, is it going to be the same recipe as the original writer? Uh, you know, the same way, you know, he did it or she did it? Obviously, it's not. It's going to be different. So when we, when we try to follow Quran and the saying and actions of the Prophet Muhammad we take it from the Quran and the Sunni and we understand it according to the understanding of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they are the one who lived with the Prophet Muhammad and took all this knowledge and apply it into action and showed us and led by examples. They showed us how all these things are done. They showed us how to be faithful. They showed us how we can understand all this information and act upon it and basically follow it the proper way. So we don't, uh, you know, uh, fall into uh, uh, misguiding information or misunderstanding of the information because we want to take it from the main source. And they were the one, the companions of the Prophet, the apostle, who followed it directly and they heard it directly from the mouth of Muhammad. So in Islam, we don't depend on scholars or priests or imams to go to the information. We depend on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his action, his saying, according to the understanding of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Later on, as general public, if we don't understand something, we go to the scholars and we ask them questions and we basically don't follow what they tell us to do unless they provide us with authentic evidence supporting their statement or recommendation. Those basically uh, evidence have to come from the Quran or the authentic Sunni, the, the authentic saying or action of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we apply it into our life according to the understanding of the uh, companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So these are like the top most important things for a new Muslim to do.